right, so welcome to the IPC community call. Uh, yeah, we start with the updates from the interchain team. Uh, Susanna is on holiday this week, so Serdar will do the updates from the product side. Yeah, um, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay, so the new website launched at the end of September, so uh, it was launched during Cosmoverse. Um, I hope you all had a chance to check it out. Um, the user interviews were conducted last month to gather information about the uh, um, certain IBC improvements. In the in this case, it's transfer, so adding the metadata field and um, multiple coin types in a packet. So, uh, meaning that you know you can send multiple um, different denoms using transfer. Um, the new blog posts were published on the new website, so. Um, those were, you should be able to view them on the new website. And um, Adi has started some research on cross rollup interoperability and uh, EIP 7281, which is like some sort of a um, interoperability standard for um, bridges on Ethereum. But um, yeah, hopefully uh, some, um, yeah, they will be useful in our uh, op integration. Yeah. Oh, thanks, uh, Serdar. Um, any questions for Serdar? All right, if not, uh, we continue with uh, updates from protocol and engineering. Yeah, the first update is uh, to, to welcome Stefano, uh, who has uh, joined the IBC team uh, last week. Uh, yeah, he's going to be working in protocol and specifications together with Aditya. He's a protocol architect. Um, yeah, so we're very excited um, to have him in the team. Um, Stefano, would you like to give maybe just a short introduction? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Stefano. I'm Italian, actually from Naples, but I'm based in Madrid. I'm in crypto space since 2017. Where I started with master thesis, you know, in computer science, like researching about cryptos, uh, and then I moved to Madrid for my PhD, which was in telecommunication, basically at interception between telecommunication and blockchain technology, as we were trying to apply the blockchain technology to the management of internet resources. Then uh, after my PhD, I joined Certic, uh, where I stayed there for a couple of years working as a DLT security expert. Uh, well, I mostly work uh, on auditing, um, touching uh, from layer one chains, layer two chains, smart contract auditing, and mostly working on onboarding on new platform, uh, especially there were uh, Rust-based platforms, and then doing uh, some other research about tooling and uh, even uh, stuff that were correlated to the routing on, or, uh, for example, uh, DNS hijacking, BGP hijacking, these the sort of things. And, well, uh, I jo just, just want to say that I'm pretty excited to, to join this team and I'd be happy to collaborate and to use my, my background to, to help uh, for whatever is needed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Stefano. All right, then uh, we continue with the updates. Uh, so before we talk about uh, yeah, like the releases and the features that we've been working on, uh, yeah, we just wanted to mention uh, about an issue that Jacob opened uh, last week. Uh, some of you uh, might be aware of this, uh, but Jacob, yeah, Jacob has been and Jacob and the notional uh, people um, yeah, found a, a, an issue. Um, that it was um, that it was triggered by by IBC messages. Um, the, the problem was that in in some of our IBC messages, uh, we have uh, string fields uh, whose length is not checked. So yeah, the example that uh, Jacob was using was uh, the, the receiver address of the message transfer. Uh, and yeah, and that can be uh, misused uh, to to create a message with an extremely long uh, receiver address. Um, that can cause the the chain to to slow down and eventually uh, stop. 
so yeah, Jacob uh, opened the issue and he also opened one of the, one PRs to one PR to add the, um, uh, the check uh, of length of the receiver address in message transfer and and we are now opening PRs for um, for uh, string fields in other messages. Um, uh, so we hope to have that. Uh, but yeah. this is this is present for like any SDK module, right? That doesn't yeah. it's a message type. Correct. Do validation on a string field. Correct. Yeah, yeah. This is a uh, this 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 can happen to any, um, yeah, uh, any module that uses messages and has a string fields whose length is not uh, validated. Then yeah, uh, it's uh, um, a potential um, uh, risk. Yeah, and and Marco, yeah, from the SDK team uh, recommended uh, modules to do uh, length uh, checking. So we are adding that. Um, yeah, um, thanks a lot to Jacob and the national team for all the work in, yeah, researching and, and, and uh, reproducing this issue. Um, yeah, so uh, any questions about that uh, before we continue with other stuff? All right. If not, then we talk about the future work that we're working on. Uh, so yeah, first priority V8. Um, yeah, our scope of work is now complete. So we have uh, uh, all the all the features that we wanted to include there um, with the upgrade to SDK 50, migration to um, uh, uh, the params to be self-managed and the migration to governance V1. Uh, yeah, Damien uh, spent uh, the last couple of weeks dealing, dealing with an um, obscure uh, bug uh, that was causing problems when trying to uh, sign transactions with uh, with the ledger. And But now, yeah, that's uh, fixed in the SDK. Um, so shout out to Damien uh, for finding the issue and, and helping to resolve it. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're now ready. We also have green compatibility tests. So we should now be ready to tag an RC uh, but yeah, we'll probably want to wait for the next RC of the Cosmos SDK that includes this uh, fix in, for the ledger signing. Uh, and then we will tag it. Um, and then, yeah, the final release, we are depending a bit on the final release of SDK 50, so the timeline depends on, on that. Um, yeah, maybe end of the month, maybe a bit later, depending when the SDK tags the final release. But yeah, from from our side, I think we we basically are done. Cool. Then, uh, yeah, now that V eight is more or less wrapped up, uh, where we have switched the uh, focus to Wasm clients. Uh, in this iteration, we're we're focusing on uh, or on a couple of things. Uh, the main one of the major things is uh, uh, refactoring the the test that we had. <clears throat> the um, the unit and integration tests we discussed and, and and we decided to go for a similar approach as we had for the callbacks middleware to use um, a mock uh, in this case a mock VM uh, so all the VM calls will be will be mocked um, yeah and and the advantage that we see is that we don't uh, we don't rely on on test data that we need to generate uh, for the tests and that should simplify our testing uh, but yeah to uh, but but uh, yeah basically to to cover um, um the, the the testing end to end we have brought to ibc go the end to end test that um, steve uh, wrote in interchain test using the grandpa contract the polkadot chain and the hyper, hyper, hyperspace relayer so we brought that to ibc go uh, so that we can have some end to end uh, test coverage and we plan to uh, add uh, more end-to-end -end tests uh, to increase the coverage, for example, to test uh, uh, timeouts. Uh, yeah, we also, um, unfortunately, we also we had to do some changes in IBC Go. That's the next point, um, to remove the support for the Tendermint Lifeline, because to be able to support this, we needed API breaking changes in IBC Go, and we needed uh, IBC Go to depend on the OE oh, was a module, um, so we decided to, for the time being, to to remove support for that uh, uh, type of light client in in, in Wasm. 
uh, and we decided to look into it again in the future if we can add support once we start uh, the work on on refactoring IBC Go to make it uh, generic and decoupling it from SDK Tendermint. Uh, probably that's a good moment when when we can. Uh, yeah, try to to add to add the support back, and um, yeah, so that's uh, what's going on uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah, the testing is one of the main things, uh, and also working on a couple of other issues from Ethan's report, Ethan Frey's report. Yeah, um, and we estimate that the release, hopefully, we can make it by the middle of November. Uh, by early next iteration, we hope to do a security audit and then tag NRC. Uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, hopefully in in a couple of weeks' time after that, we can we can tag the final release. Yes, yeah, so that's that's our main focus right now for the next. Uh, yeah, I mean, release. yeah. Like we have merchant inside, and and the team no more involved. I'm too much. Sorry. Sorry, do you have a question or, mm. or okay, we'll continue then. Um yeah, and then V8, uh, V9, so that would be yeah, the, the release for channel aggregability. The work is a bit post at the moment to focus on Wasm. Um we hope to resume this uh, yeah, maybe next iteration a bit. And then um, we're going to try to release this by the end of, of the quarter, end of the year. Yeah, probably we're going to meet it. Cool. So, yeah, this is uh, all that we are, that's happening at the moment. The most important stuff. Any, any questions? Uh, hey, I, I have two questions. Uh, just to confirm something, uh, the Wasm client will be a tagged version separate from the like V8, V9, so similar to the Wasm alpha that's currently tagged, right? Yes. Yeah. So so it will be, uh, so Wasm clients will have its own Go mode. It will be um, a light client module in IBC Go, but it will have its own Go mode and it will be tagged independently from IBC Go uh, release, IBC Go releases. Yeah. Is that, that, that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. And yeah. Uh, just to be sure, the the channel upgradeability beta is paused. So until next, the end of the quarter, if I understood correctly, right? And uh, well, we tried. To, we want to try to release the final end of the year, and we try to do. We will try to do a beta uh, somewhere probably towards uh, end of November. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, we 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 still have issues opened uh, for beta in the milestone. Uh, and we still need to do the the alpha um, alpha audit, which probably will happen next iteration. Yeah, so maybe in two three weeks we can do the alpha audit and and then work on the beta issues. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Any <clears throat> any other questions? All right. If not, um, uh, we can. Um, go with the updates for the layer teams. Uh, Hermes, I see that. Luca, you probably uh, added something here. Let me see. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. so basically we have uh, an upcoming uh, release for version 1.7. Uh, these are some of the features that uh, will be in this new version. So manual, tr manual trigger for the packet clearing. Uh, we updated also our tracing log to kind of update the directives while it's running. And the uh, listen command now is compatible with the pull mode. And we're also working on new misbehavior detector. Other than that, some of the changes are more like uh, log improvements. Cool. OK. Question in, in Hermes, Hermes uh, 1.7, will there be support for the, the new uh, governance v1 messages that we are adding in v8 uh, for recovery client and, and upgrading the client? Uh, Will that already support those? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I would need to check that. Okay. Okay, we can check uh, offline then. Yeah. 
Sure. I'll uh, let you know as soon as I have more information. Cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, from the Relayer team, from Relay team, any updates? I think I see Justin. Yep. Hey, everybody. Hi, um, Carl Carlos, would it be helpful to actually edit this document ahead of time, um, similar to the way the Hermes team just did? I could start doing that moving forward just to have some stuff there already so you don't have to type it as I talk. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll do that moving forward. Um, as far as the Go Relay is concerned, we had heard some issues coming in where the um, calculated gas was coming out incorrect for the simulated transactions for looked like mostly when creating clients. Um, it looked like that was kind of a two-part problem that has been fixed now. Um, the other thing that we've been really working on is cleaning up some of the CI pipeline in the relayer. For a long time, we were using the self-hosted runners um, because we had such big end-to-end um, -end jobs. But we noticed that it had become flaky and it was becoming a little bit um, cumbersome to deal with. So we've gone back to a more lightweight CI pipeline, which should hopefully remove some of the burden on people who are trying to like open PRs. Um, I think the only other changes recently are we've added a few new commands to the um, CLI for being able to interact with like the config, such as changing like your RPC addresses. Um, and then also a new command for being able to handle stuck packets. Previously, if a packet was stuck, um, but for some reason the relayer didn't have like the cached state needed to deal with that um, since it was like some sort of historical state in the past. Um, pretty much what we would have to do is restart the relayer with like a initial block history. Um, and you know if it's if it's maybe 10,000 blocks have gone by since that packet was stuck, it would become a very long process to get that packet unstuck. We've created a new command that lets you give a start and end block height of where you think the packet is stuck between, like, you know, the packet stuck between block height X and Y. Um, and this should allow you to clear out stuck packets without that huge delay that we were previously seeing with the uh, block history flag. Okay, cool. Thank you, Justin. Uh, just uh, also yep. similar question to ask for Hermes uh, regarding support for V8. Uh, is, is the relayer ready? Oh, uh, yeah. That... Actually, I can't believe I forgot to mention that. That was one of the bigger things we've been working on. Um, <laughs> we've been working on adding the support for V8 to the relayer. I think it was Colin had opened up an issue a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, about um, the block results. Type yeah. returning um, from Comet. Um, I played around with this for a while. There's not a great way <clears throat> to handle this without doing some sort of vendoring or forking of the Comet repository due to mm -hmm. the Go module system not being able to handle um, two different versions of a dependency that are on the same major revision. Um, so we do have a forked version of Comet that appears to work um, so that we can import an older and the newer version. It's in the dev branch right now. I'm still cleaning up a, a few of the end-to-end -end tests, but I will, um, I'll push that work and get a draft PR opened. I believe you guys were waiting for a Docker image to see if uh, you guys could get some of your own tests passing, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if you get a Docker image, then we can plug it in our CI and yeah, run all the compatibility tests. Yeah. Cool. I will get that cleaned up and pushed on um, at some point today, and I will ping you guys. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, great. <clears throat> yep. All right. Uh, then that's for related teams. Any other topics that anybody would like to talk about today? Uh, I guess while, while I'm kind of still talking, I'll throw out that we officially have Penumbra completely working inside of the Go Relayer. And we've also gotten Penumbra support fully integrated inside of Interchain tests. Um, 
it's in a working state, but I think there there are some improvements as far as being able to um, have Penumbra support inside of Interchain Test while using their client daemon. Um, so that way you can build their protos inside of the Go code um, and use kind of what I think their intended architecture is going to be in the real world. Um, but yeah, we are working hard to make Penumbra first classes in, inside of Interchain Test. Cool. Great to hear. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other topics or good news to share with the with the rest of the with the rest of us? Anybody? All right. If there's nothing else, then we can wrap up here. All right. Thanks, Ross. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.